Let's go right back to our phone callers. Next up is Sean listening in Topeka, Kansas, listening on Bot Radio. Hi, Sean. Can you hear me? I sure can. Yes, Hank, I got a question for you. Uh, I just heard on the radio about the age of the earth. Now, here's my dilemma. I, I heard on the radio, on Bot Radio the other morning, I'm not going to say the pitcher's name, but he said that in the, it's in the presence of God, one day is a thousand years. And when you just said that a second ago that it's one, you believe that the earth was built in one solar day. And my dilemma is, is this is how churches get into arguments back and forth. One says one's wrong, one says another's wrong. I've never heard you say somebody is wrong unless they're absolutely wrong, but that's my dilemma. So what do you believe? Well, I, I'm not saying that the universe was created in a solar day. I'm saying that the days of creation are given as solar days, which is to say that if you look at day one, day one is expressed as morning and evening the first day. The same is true with day two and day through, three, although the sun, moon, and stars were not created until day four. So all I'm suggesting is that the grid given to us is given to us in solar days, but not to give us a chronology of creation, rather to give us a way of remembering each day of the week that God is the creator of all things. Uh, So Moses is giving his hearers a way in which they can not only hear but remember so that the information is imprinted on the canvas of their consciousness. And that further is why I explained that he put together in an oral culture the book of Genesis in such a way that people might not only read but also remember. And so he puts it together in such a way that you can remember the main themes with the ten fingers of your hands, from my primeval history to to the patriarchs. Um, So I'm simply saying it's intentional so that we remember God's purposes in creation. It's not intentional so that we have a chronology of creation. Okay, I understand. Okay, I got that part. Okay. But here's another question for you then. Here where I live, Topeka, Kansas, and you go to a church, and the church, Baptist church, will go, well, don't believe what the Pentecostals say because... They're, they're wrong. That's, I, I guess my question is, is, who do you believe in? Well, I, I think there's a couple of things here, and, and you're bringing up a very important point. I, I think the first thing to recognize is that in essentials we ought to have unity, which is to say there are those essential Christian doctrines that form the line of demarcation between the kingdom of Christ and the kingdom of the cults. We can't compromise on that. For example, we can't compromise on the deity of Jesus Christ. That is an essential of essentials. We cannot compromise on the nature of God. We cannot compromise on the way of salvation, the fact that we are saved by God's grace through faith on account of Jesus Christ alone. These are things that cannot be compromised. When it comes to eschatology, we cannot compromise on the fact that Jesus is going to return again. But the meaning of the millennium or the timing of the tribulation is something that we can debate vigorously. We don't have to divide over. Likewise, there are other secondary issues, and those secondary issues may be important, but they're not deal breakers. So, for example, you bring up Pentecostalism. Pentecostalism says tongues is the evidence of the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Now, I disagree with that. In fact, I disagree with that strongly. But that's still a secondary issue, and therefore I can debate that issue vigorously with my Pentecostal friends, but it doesn't break our fellowship. But if a Mormon comes along and says, Jesus is not the one who spoke and the universe leapt into existence, the creator of all things, then I have to say that's a deal breaker. Now, while I would disagree with them, and say this is an essential and therefore you are no longer communicating Christian theology, you're not in the pale of orthodoxy, but you're in the kingdom of the cults, I still have to treat that person with dignity and respect in hopes that with the love that I demonstrate, the life that I demonstrate, I'm able to reach them with my lips as well. So that's why we always say an essentials unity, non-essentials 
liberty and all things charity.